Hi, I'm Frank and welcome to my wood turning channel. Today I'm going to turn this piece of oak. It's a bit of a special piece I got from a friend. It's a 200 year old live oak from, from a, a monastery in uh, North Carolina. So I'm going to turn this piece and give it back to the individual who gave me the wood. So that'll be a nice little present for him. Very dense, very heavy, and very dark and weather beaten, but uh, we'll see what we can get out of it. Basically, I'm looking at doing a little vase shape or a deep bowl shape. I'm just marking the centers on each side. I'm just going to start this piece between centers and here I'm just checking to see that it's roughly the same distance from the tool rest all the way around. So it's just approximately centered. And this is side grain so all of the cuts are going to be from the small diameter to the large diameter. And here I'm using just a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm not in my normal shop for this video I'm making and this isn't my normal lathe so everything's a little bit strange to me until I get used to it. This wood I'm finding is very very hard and it must have sand or grit or silica in it or something because it's dulling the tool really really quickly. Here you see me tightening every once in a while and that's just because the spur drive is slipping. This is just a shot from another angle. Uh, you can see I'm doing a bevel rubbing cut with the flute approximately at 45 degrees. And just trying to get the shape here and get a smooth cut as best I can. Even though it is an interrupted cut still at this point. This is like the hare and the tortoise, slow and steady usually wins the race or at least it gives you a, a good surface finish if you're not pushing too quickly. Here I'm just trying to make sure that I am cutting at center. Uh, you get your best cut if you cut at or above center. I seem to forget it was side grain. Here I'm getting some catches. I'm trying to force it. Nah, this just doesn't work. There. Cutting the right way. It always is an easier cut when you're cutting the correct way with the grain.
You'll see at the very top where the live edge here, sometimes they'll just come in the other way, just so that the, the live edge doesn't chip out. I did find there were quite a few cracks in this, so I didn't make the base particularly small. I kept it large, and I put a little shoulder all the way around for some future carving and embellishment I'm going to do. Now here I'm just using a skew, well it's actually a negative rake scraper, just to form a couple of grooves on each side of that shoulder. After cutting the grooves, I did do a little bit of negative rake scraping, these scrapers. Uh, now here I'm just going up to the edge, and I'm actually going the wrong way here. I probably should go the other way, but I got away with it because the wood's so hard. If I was back home in my normal shop, I probably would have power sanded this. And I also probably would have filled the cracks with some epoxy. Or at least wood dust uh, and CA glue. But I'm going to leave this piece a bit rustic and see how it goes. I'm going to burn some lines in, in each of the grooves on, the, on either side of this raised area. And that will help prevent uh, the ink from spilling over into the main piece. Because I'm going, to, I'm going to blacken that raised portion. Now here I'm just doing the texturing. Uh, again, if I was back in my shop, I might have used a texturing tool while this was on the lathe. But I'm just going to do all of this with uh, just this little uh, micro motor tool. Or basically you can use a Dremel to do the same thing. I normally do this texturing when the piece has been fully turned inside and outside. But this time I decided because the outside is fully done, I'm just going to do the texturing now. And I'm going to apply the India ink now as well. I've put some painter's tape around the raised portion just to prevent splatter. And here you can see the India ink I'm going to use. If you do this carefully, you won't really get much splatter, but I was just trying to be careful here and, and just save myself some problems. I'm just going along the groove as best I can and just getting right into that burned groove line that I made on each side of the raised portion. And in the end here I really didn't have any splatter so I didn't, I didn't actually need to use the painter's tape. This is sped up. I'm actually going quite a bit slower than what the, the video is showing here. Now I'm just mounting this in a four jaw chuck and then I'm going to turn the inside.
I'm just starting out the cuts with a half inch bowl gouge and again this wood is very hard so I'm just doing a little bit at a time If you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I've gone in approximately an inch and a half and now I'm just going to get my final wall thickness and then once I've made this cut here in the in the wall I won't go back to this part of the of the piece again because this will tend to warp as I go in deeper yeah that looks pretty good probably about 3 sixteenths inch thick I don't have my nice Andre Martel calipers, but these Sorby ones will do the trick. They're not as good for getting the bottom thickness, but uh, I'll just have to gauge it as best I can. I'm just going to use this negative rake scraper to take out a few of the little ridges on the inside surface. You always have to be careful when you're sanding these inside surfaces so that you don't uh, you don't get a catch with your fingers. So here I'm just steadying the sanding paper with my uh, with my other arm, and uh, this allows me to do the inside sanding pretty safely. Here I'm just using a jam chuck with a foam pad on it. Uh, this is a, a nice simple way of just removing the bottom tenon. I know this looks a little bit dangerous with my fingers underneath, but I do have them off to the side just a little bit, so if I inadvertently go through, I'm not going to slice my finger up.
I'm just removing the little nub on the bottom with a cuts all burr. First I start with a really coarse burr which is the green one and then I'm going to change over to a little bit finer burr which will be the yellow one. And then in the end I, I do a little bit of texturing in this area. Now I'm applying a little bit of silver gilt on the, uh, the blackened area. This is from Chromacraft. And this is something I do to my larger pieces, but I thought I'd give this a whirl on a smaller piece just to see if it looked good or not. After spraying, I'm just going to show you a couple of images of the final piece.